Welcome back to another episode and as you can see by the title this episode is about the Mitsubishi Evo project so the parts have come in to get this car back together if you haven't seen the uh, previous episodes where we put this block together go and watch that and obviously go and watch the episode where we put this head together as well so now we've got the head and the block all built up you can see how fresh it's looking we've got the head gasket and we're going to bolt this thing back together so i'm going to run you through the parts that we've got already you can see we've got new clutch plates because they were worn so let's start off with the uh, gasket kit so um there weren't really many gasket kits on the market that supply everything you need now so we went with the uh, genuine mitsubishi head gasket kit and you can see all the different gaskets and o-rings and uh, every single part that we need so obviously we're not going to need the head gasket itself but this is the five layer mitsubishi mr head gasket if we want to use that which is a very good gasket the only problem is when this crushes down it crushes down to about 0.91 mil so it's not quite thick enough so what we've went for is the Cosworth one because obviously we've had the block has been decked and the head has been skimmed and done the calculations I've worked out that we're going to need a 1.3 millimeter uh, head gasket which is exactly what we've got we've gone for the Cosworth head gasket which is one of the best on the market um, I like to use OEM wherever I can but if not you know you can't go wrong with the Cosworth stuff it's really high quality you can see this is a five layer one as well so that's going to clamp down really nicely with these H11 head studs and we're going to have no problem with uh, lifting the head at higher boost and also because we're obviously doing a new build uh, we don't know how old that oil pump was so went to Mitsubishi and we've got a, a genuine Mitsubishi oil pump a brand new one so we know that we're gonna have the uh, oil pressures that we need and we ain't gonna have no issues with oil pressures which is as you know from the last engine one of the most important parts so you can see it's got all the seals fitted um, because we've got the balance of shaft delete we're gonna have to delete a couple of these put a bung in them um, but you can see brand spanking new that's gonna look nice on the block and we're gonna have perfect oil pressures uh, we're gonna get the oil pressure um, sensor put into that as well so that we know from the ECU you can shut down the engine uh, whenever we get past the low oil pressure threshold that I'm gonna set inside the link ECU as you know we've got a link G4 ECU which is gonna be perfect for this so onto the cam belt side of things obviously you want to replace all of your cam belt um, auxiliary parts so we've gone for brand new idler pulleys you can see Mitsubishi items um, genuine ones from Japan also brand new uh, Mitsubishi adjuster tensioner now um, the one that we had on there was started to leak and it was old and you can't take any chances when it comes to tensioning of the cam belt especially at high revs so we've got a brand new one there all ready to go on so that's uh, perfect that's going to last a lot of time and also because we're obviously going to be running a lot of power we've gone for the gates uprated cam belt this is the kevlar timing belt and you can see it looks pretty as well so that's a blue one so that's going to be perfect so we're going to have super high strength cam belt on there all brand new stuff and also you know you can't be doing a cam belt without doing your water pump now obviously these water pumps don't run off the cam belt like some engines do but you might as well change it at the same time so you don't know how old your water pump is so we've gone for a brand new mitsubishi water pump as well and we've got the kit the gasket the bolts the whole lot so that's going to be fresh on there so you see with the metal blades on the back so i've also gone with an uprated thermostat now uh, this is opens up 68 degrees so you can see on there that one opens at 68 degrees celsius and uh, the instructions here are in a language i don't understand obviously japanese but it's a, a monster sport upgraded thermostat now we're going to move on to the clutch side of things now so you see in the previous episode running a twin plate setup an xd twin plate clutch um, obviously to take the higher torque loads that we're going to be running but you also see that they had fitted that clutch incorrectly and unbalanced and it caused premature wear of the clutch plate and you can see this clutch plate has uh, had its day um, on the left hand side it's absolutely chewed up but on the right hand side you can see here it's pretty much got stock thickness on it now if this had been fitted correctly this plate would still be absolutely fine but you can see um, it's started to break apart and it's uh, seen some serious heat so we've gone and got some brand new clutch plates now you can see these ain't, these ain't cheap um, but it's well worth doing once you've got the clutch apart it's rebuilding it with clutch plates so you can see that they don't have a ton of meat on these from stock it's only really about two millimeter of meat but obviously because they are sharing the clamping load across two plates they don't wear nowhere near as quickly so 
obviously this is a racing clutch and it's going to take the heat that we need and the power that we need and the torque um, you can go up to a triple plate clutch but it's really not needed at the power level we're going so these are the brand new clutches and also we've gone for a brand new release bearing as well you know you always got to change your release bearing if you're doing a clutch or taking the gearbox off uh, unnecessary um, strain on that especially with the amount of strain that's going on the trim plate clutch change of release bearing so first off we're going to get to getting this oil pump fitted so you can see this is the brand new oil pump and there's slight differences between this one and this uh, old oil pump that we had on there that's got the balancer shaft delete already done to it so you can see already up here we've got the blank so this one's got the seal and that's basically where the balancer shaft would run and that's the seal just to um, stop the oil leaking through and on the back as well you can see on this one on the actual oil pump itself We've got uh, an adapter here that allows you to delete it off of the uh, oil pump itself. You can see this has to be removed that. And then there's also a cover on the front here, which we haven't got on this one. So that's got to be put on there. So we're gonna remove all this now, give it a clean up, and then we're gonna put it on, gonna get a new seal for it as well. So basically this is what the kit looks like for the balance shaft delete. You've got your bung, and that just replaces this oil seal here because you're not needing that anymore. So that bungs that off. You've got your gear, which obviously sits in there, gets bolted in. You've got your o-ring as well which goes in there so that you use that and then this cover then screws into there blanks that off so i've just done the bolt up here this one is the 36 newton meters lucky i got all the torques because i've got the manual you can see now when you spin that it actually spins the oil pump as well you can see the oil pump spinning so that's working and then you get your new oil seal put that in there like that it seals nicely and then you just get your cover slot that over the top and you are supposed to have a special tool that locks this up to a certain newton meters, but you can just tap it around with a screwdriver if you haven't got one. And then this bung just gets tapped in there. I tend to put a little bit of sealant around there, but it's not necessary. Just tap that in there nice and straight. That's gonna bung that off. So I'm gonna go over all these bolt holes now, clean up this whole surface as well, because you can see in here there's like rust and everything, but someone used Loctite, which you should never do on these bolts. You can see it's filled up all the threads with nasty Loctite. And what happens is, if you leave that in there and you go to torque up the bolts, you're going to get the wrong torque readings and they can come undone. So never use top Loctite on bolts, you really don't need to. Right, so let's get this oil pump on. So I've got all the torque specs here. So I've got the Mitsubishi menu of all the different specs and everything. So you can see all the different bolts. I've got different torques and everything. Um, I've just lined up all the bolts out in different positions because you can see they're all different lengths. And uh, I've also just rubbed down the block with a flat block, make sure all the surface is clean and then went over it with Blake cleaner. And then that's gonna make sure, you can see there's no oils, greases or silicones on there. It's only a little thin paper gasket. You don't want any uneven edges. So that's all clean now. So let's get this oil pump on. So I'm just giving this sump a clean up. Obviously still got to do a little bit in here, gonna do some brake clearing now. I've went around the surfaces of the flange and uh, cleaned them all up properly. It would have been quicker to just bought a new sump, but the sank I forgot about. Um, it's a little bit of surface rust and that where the powder coat and that's coming off. So I'm just gonna give this a clean up now, give it some paint. Um, it's no damage or nothing to the sump, it's just purely cosmetic. I've just give that two coats of high build primer I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and get some uh, gloss black on it. It's not the best night to be painting, but it's not a problem. Put some heaters on it. So while I'm going over this oil pickup pipe, I'm just checking everything over and I've cleaned it out properly. Um, a little tip, if you've got like um, gasket material that's stuck on the uh, flange itself, you can see where people in the past have tried scratching it off. It's quite funny to see. Just get yourself a brass wheel, because brass can't damage steel, and just get in there and uh, get that gasket off. Uh, while you're checking it over as well, get inside there, because in the mesh, if you had uh, obviously bearing damage or oil pressure issues, you're gonna get bearing swarf inside there. So go over it with compressed air, blast some compressed air all inside it. Also, while you're checking around it, make sure you look around the neck, because all of these are prone to cracking. The Subarus are the worst. Um, and also these flanges come away you can see it's like pressed on so if they come away you'll start sucking in air which will give you low oil pressure issues so while that's off give it a proper check over
That looks a lot better than it did. They're all painted up looking fresh now. Um, it's not going to be able to go on just yet. What I'm going to do is get the head on first because this has got to come off the engine stand. You can see on the back here, the rear main seal gets put into this housing on the back of the crankshaft. Um, you can tell that obviously you can't get down the back there. You've got to put sealant on the back of this and then bolt it on, torque it up. That sump bolts to that. So what I'm going to do first is get the head on all bolted up and then we'll be able to take this off and put it onto an engine crane. So now it's time to get this head on this block. Um, what I've just done is I've went around the bores with some oil. I've just oiled them up because I don't know how long they're going to be sitting. And if any moisture or anything gets in there, I don't want no surface rust on them. Um, it's going to probably smoke a little bit when it starts up, but that's not a problem. And then also what I like to do is these head studs, I like to go over them with a flat bar and make sure they're all perfectly lined up. So they're exactly the right length on each stud. So you have no um, torque problems, which they are. They're absolutely perfect down to the actual millimetre. So I'm very happy with that. So let's get this head gasket on. So obviously we're using the Cosworth head gasket, the 1.3 millimetre one. So you're gonna get that on there. I'm just gonna wipe down the block because there's a little bit of oil on it where I've got it spilt on the block. Get some brake cleaner on there. It doesn't matter how many times you've went over the block and you've given it a clean. Before you put the head gasket on, go over some brake cleaner and a rag and give it a proper, proper clean up so there's no dust, dirt, grease or anything in between the gasket and the sealing surfaces that's going to impede the head gasket sealing. Um, so now that's proper clean. You can see, even though I've done it a couple of times, still stuff coming off it. Now, even in the packet, these can pick up damage. So just go round, check all the cylinders, check all the edges, make sure there's no damage to the head gasket before you put it on, even though it is brand new, you want to check it anyway. And also I just go over it with a rag and some brake cleaner, just make sure there's no oils or anything off the fingers, so that's absolutely spot on. Even though the head's been properly cleaned, obviously it's been sitting for a little bit and you get grease and everything on your hands, proper bit of brake cleaner. I've went over it already, give it a thorough degrease. You can see how much has come off it, even though it's a new, fresh build. But it's just the contaminants that get onto the surfaces that you don't want on your head gasket. So proper clean up with some brake cleaner again on that. Right, so let's get to getting this head on. So it's very simple with head studs. Just look down the head bolt holes, slide it over the studs, and then if you're here, you go, when you wobble it, you're going to the dowel pins, like that, and that's seated. heads require all different head bolt tightening torque sequences so just so you don't get them mixed up because you've got to do these in three different stages I just write the uh, to tightening torque sequence on the head so you can see look one two three four five six seven eight nine ten because obviously you're going to be doing it like uh, 30 times 30 different head bolts so you want to make sure you get them all in the right torque sequences because that's most important to clamping down this head third and final torque sequence. in the process at the minute of changing out the camshaft oil seal so we just removed the old one off of there obviously you have to remove the pulley to get that off because it's behind the pulley and you know by now but we've got the um, brand new lash adjusters for anyone else that wants to know they're just basically a hydraulic lifter and these have got the extra clearance in the top of them with the three millimeter size instead of the one millimeter size on the stock ones and that stops them getting clogged up So everything fresh out the steam cleaner looking mint so we're going to get these rocker arms into oil so they're all lubed up um, new bolts time to get these rocker arms in all i do is i just put them in a bag with some oil in it give them a shake and they're properly lubricated up so as you know they just literally slot in there like that and the camshaft sits on the top of that This is 
pretty mad. I just went to fit the cam gears obviously to the cams and you can see this one's got no dowel and this one has a dowel but it looks like it's been modified. Um, when I looked inside this cam gear you can see it's obviously worn away a little bit as opposed to the one that wasn't worn like that and what had happened is someone had made up a dowel pin out of a hollow shaft you can see like that and when I went to prise it out of the hole it literally just cracked so that would have been fun if I hadn't noticed that because obviously the cam gear has got nowhere to locate and it would have just spun and smashed the valves to pieces just a quick one if you're making a dowel pin and the easiest way to make one is out of the end of a drill bit because obviously the drill bits are hardened anyway and you can get them in half mil increments so as you can see like this is obviously slightly over large now whereas it would normally be six mil i'm going to go with a six and a half mil one and then i'll be able to get six and a half mil drill bit in there hollow it out a little bit and then smack that in there and it will be a nice solid hardened bit of steel as opposed to as you can see here ridiculous idea there we go a proper dowel pin fitted in there now you can even see the marking still the six and a half mil drill bit but it's really mad how you what you can tell from the uh, parts on an engine of what's happened in the past so this is the one that had the good dowel pin on it and this is the one that had the bad dowel pin now i can tell now why that dowel pin was replaced by that stupid hollow one by some company is because the previous dowel pin looked like it had broken because you can see here it's spun on the back of the cam gear 180 degrees out so that would have spun and uh, then obviously knocked the timing out and at some point in the uh, head's life or the cam's life these valves have smashed the pistons um, and that's obviously been replaced who would have thought they would have learned their lesson by doing a proper dowel pin you know the dowel pin breaks and then they go and put a useless bit of dowel pin on there and uh, all that's going to happen again is it's going to spin or it's going to break and luckily I got to it before it did. So I just went over a few of the covers and everything and uh, zinc galvanized coated them. No you didn't need to see that but you can see how much prettier they look. But once I've been started to put this bottom pulley back on you can see I put the balancer um, shaft pulley on the back and this is the timing disc for the crank uh, sensor that would sit here and you can see if you look there that it's obviously worn away either side it's been moving and moving about over time and it should sit there exactly there where you can see the notch at the top but you can see how much plays in it so this is going to cause or probably did cause running issues and especially when mapping you're not going to be able to get cam sync properly and uh, top dead center of the crank sensor so that's got to be replaced so that's no good anymore so we're going to take it off it just means i can't pop the pulley and time it on yet until i get a new one so i absolutely love how detailed the mitsubishi manuals are you can see on here it tells you exact length of each bolt 24 22 14 70 um, when i've got this uh, water pump off you can see the bolts were just a generic bolt that had been changed to a normal length bolt um, you can see each one of these bolts is a different length so i went through my japanese bolt collection and cars have broken over the years managed to get all the bolt lengths that i needed so we're getting somewhere with this engine now so we've got the anodized pulleys on there the hks ones looking nice got to time them up obviously you've got the backing plates on now for the cam belt cover and the one that goes behind the engine man water pumps on there looking fresh i've also put the oil pump pulley on as well so we're going to call it a day on this episode because obviously i've got to order this crank sensor triggering and i've also got to order a new crank sensor because even though it's still working it's had better days you can see how nasty the plug is it's all cracked and frayed the shielding's all frayed and the ends are all started to fray off obviously we don't want no uh problem with the crank sensor and uh, you can see it sits there behind the cam belt so you don't want to be replacing that when the engine's in so it's much better to do it there so obviously i've got to wait for that but i hope you've been enjoying this episode so a quick one to finish off this episode we're going to obviously be painting this cam cover at some point probably not straight away because we want to get it on and running but it's going to be taken back off what color would you recommend painting this white black you know the original color which is like a maroon color leave it in the comments section and let me know